Welcome to Electron Online. Our next example is a little bit more challenging. It is also a very typical problem that's done in these types of uh, problems. Here we're trying to find the largest volume cylinder that fits into a right circular cone. They give us the dimensions of the cone. It has a height of 20 centimeters and a radius of 12 centimeters. So how large can that cylinder be such that it has the largest volume and still fits inside that cone? Well, first we need to draw a picture of that and to make it easier, I've already done so. Here's the picture. Notice the height of the cylinder is capital H and the radius of the cylinder is capital R. Two, we need to figure out what's being maximized or minimized. Now in this case, they tell us that volume is maximized. And again, it's always a good idea to write it out. On the next step, we're going to have to write an equation that for the volume as a function of the unknown variables. So the volume of a cylinder can be written as the area of the base, which would be pi r squared times the height, which is h. Again, notice that we have the volume as a function of two different variables, r and h, which means we're going to have to eliminate one of those variables. For that, we're going to need a constraint. How do we come up with a relationship between r and h so that it fits inside that right circular cone? Now, if we think about taking a cross-section of that and taking just the right side of it, it can look like this. So this would be a cross-section of the right circular cone and this would be a cross-section of the cylinder that fits inside the right circular cone. So that we have the height of the cylinder in this direction and the radius of the cylinder in this direction. Also, we can come up with an equation for this line right here. That would be the edge of the right circular cone. We think of it in terms of y equals mx plus b. Notice the intercept will occur at 20 because if we put the origin right at the middle right here, we know that the height of the right circular cone is 20 and the radius of this is 12. So we can say that y is equal to the slope, that would be a drop of 20 and a run of 12, that would be minus 20 over 12x plus the intercept which is at 20. And of course simplifying that, we can divide both the top and the bottom by, hmm, it looks like 4. So this becomes y equals minus 5 over 3x plus 20. Now, it turns out that we can relate y and x to h and r, because they will have the same proportions. r would be the value for x, and h would be the value for y. As x becomes smaller, y becomes larger, therefore as r becomes smaller, h becomes smaller. And, or h becomes larger, I should say. So y can represent h, and x represents r. So this is minus 5 over 3r, plus 20 and now we have our constraint or our relationship between the height and the radius of the cylinder. Once we have that we can plug that in here to limit one of the variables and that's step number five. So now we can go ahead and take this, plug it in here and we now have volume is equal to pi r squared times instead of h we can write minus 5 over 3 r plus 20 of course, multiplying this out, we get the volume is equal to minus 5 over 3 pi r cubed and plus 20 pi r squared. Now we have an equation for the volume, the item that we're trying to, in this case, maximize in terms of only one of the unknowns. So the next step is to take the derivative and set that derivative equal to zero. We get v prime is equal to, bring that down, we get minus 5 pi r squared and here we get plus 40 pi r and now we're going to set v prime equal to 0 and again the reason why we do that is because we're trying to find the maximum value, in this case we're trying to find the maximum value. 
So we get 0 is equal to minus 5 pi r squared plus 40 pi r. And now we're going to solve that for the unknown variable r. First of all, you can see that we can divide both sides by 5 and both sides by pi. So this becomes 0 is equal to, well, we still have a minus, so it's minus r squared plus 8r. So moving that to the other side, we get r squared is equal to 8r, and dividing both sides of the equation by r, we get r is equal to 8. That tells us one of the two unknowns, the radius of the cylinder, must equal 8. Now we need to find the height of the cylinder, so we plug this value back into the constraint equation. And that tells us that the height is equal to minus 5 over 3 times the radius, which is 8, plus 20. So the height is equal to, that would be minus 40 over 3 plus 20. Hmm, minus 40 over 3, that would be minus 13 and a third, so h is equal to minus 13 and a third plus 20, which means that the height is equal to 6.67. Of course, the units, do we have some units? We had centimeters, of course, the units then would be 8 centimeters for the radius and 6.67 centimeters for the height. Now we can do a quick check. We can see if that indeed gives us a reasonable value for the volume. We can say that the volume of the right, uh, the right cylinder, so we're going to do a quick check. The volume of the, not the cylinder, but the, of the cone is equal to one-third the base, the area of the base, which would be uh, pi times the radius squared. In this case, the radius is 12, so it'll be 12 squared times the height, which is 20. So approximate value, pi divided by 3 is approximately 1. 12 squared is 144 times 20, 288. That would be approximately 2880, a little bit more because pi divided by 3 is a little bit more than 1. And now let's find the volume of the cylinder. And that would be area to base times the height. So it would be the area to base would be pi times 8 squared times the height, and the height was 6.67. So again, for approximate values, that would be 64 times pi, a little bit over 3. 64 times a little over 3 is about 200. Times this will give us about uh, roughly 1350. And you can see that that's roughly half of the volume of the right circular cone, which means that we can say that the values, at least, are reasonable. We don't know for sure it's, it's correct, but we know that they are reasonable. Again, a quick review. We're told to find the largest volume cylinder that fits into a right circular cone. We first start by drawing a diagram that shows the right circular cone and the cylinder inside. We label the variables for the right circular cone and the variables for the cylinder. Step two, we determine what's being maximized and we're trying to find the maximum volume of the cylinder. Then we come up with an equation in terms of the unknown variables. The volume is the area of the base times the height. And then for step four, we try to find the constraint that will allow us to eliminate one of the variables. And we use the concept of the straight line equation y equals mx plus b to relate the variables h and r of the cylinder to y and x of that straight line. Once we've done that, we now have a relationship between the height and the radius of the cylinder. We solve for one of the variables and we eliminate h in this equation. Now coming up with an equation that is the volume in terms of one variable only. We then take the derivative of that, set equal to zero, and then we solve for the unknown variable. Once we've done it for the one variable, we use a constraint to get the value of the other variable. And then we do a quick check to make sure that we're in the ballpark, that it does seem to be correct. And that's how it's done.